Well, we're looking at the gospel as compared to some other worldviews and world religions, and this week kind of focuses on atheism. And we're looking at the verse, two verses actually, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Go ahead and pull up your Bible, either there on your phone or on your screen. 1 Corinthians 3, two verses, 19 and 20. Let me read them to you. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness before God, for it is written, He is the one who catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, verse 20, The Lord knows the reasonings of the wise that they are useless. When the Bible calls someone a fool when it comes to denying the existence of God, it has less to do with their intelligence. For there are many atheists who are very intelligent, but they're using their intelligence to come to the wrong conclusion or they're using their reasoning to make wrong decisions. And so it's not because there's a lack of intelligence. There's many atheists I know who are very, very intelligent. It's actually less about a lack of evidence that there is a God. It has more to do with a lack of righteousness. They're denying the moral restraints of this God than there is denial of the existence of God. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm a dad. And as a dad, my wife and I raised three daughters, and we're still raising some daughters that are now adults, but parenting never ends, right? When they were little, uh, we had their best interests in mind, and my wife and I tried to be really good parents. We failed. We did our best to be good parents. And with that, we laid down some boundaries and some restraints and some guidelines and some rules. Why? Because we loved our children. There are many who would say there is a God as long as this God leaves me alone and minds his own business. But that's not the God that we have. That's not the God of the Bible. You see, when the Bible was written in Genesis 1-1, it says there is a God. Uh, It said, in the beginning, God. The Bible was not written to tell us there's a God or to give us the evidence of God. It was written to tell us about God, that God is good. And God has our best interests in mind. And so any boundaries and guidelines that God does give us is because he's good. And the very first sin in the Garden of Eden, the question that was posed to Adam and Eve is about had everything to do with the goodness of God. Do you and I today believe that God is good and believe that the boundaries he's placed in our life are good for us? You see, at times... Uh, It would be easier to live at times for a moment to live as if God didn't exist so I could indulge in the personal pleasures that I so choose to want to live. And when I do that, it's as if I'm saying there is no God. For life would be easier and simpler if there was no God when it comes to moral restraint. But there is a God. And many atheists or many of those who claim to not believe in God would like to escape the condemnation of their conscience than rather believe in a creator God. But here's the irony. For those of us who believe in Jesus, Romans 8, 1 says, there is no condemnation. And so what our atheist friends need more than anything is to understand the concept of grace. That although God has given us guidelines and boundaries and rules, and we all fall short of those, God has also given us grace. And every atheist deserves grace. Because you know what? There's a little bit of atheism in me. When I choose to please myself, when I choose the temporary pleasures of this world, it's as if I'm saying there is no God. I'm living my life as if there is no God. Psalm 14.1 and Psalm 53.1 say, The fool says in his heart there is no God. At times, that foolishness is not because of a lack of intelligence. It's because I want to do what I want to do. And so every day, for me, even as a follower of Jesus, but especially for those who are saying there is no God, to recognize and point to the goodness of God and to his grace. So if you and I have any friends who may claim there is no God, may we offer them grace and point them to the goodness and grace that that God offers. Uh, Would you pray with me today? And so, Father, as we come to you today, we recognize that we have all sinned, and we've lived life at times as if there is no God. Thank you for your grace. 
Thank you for your unconditional love that covers a multitude of sins. I pray, God, that we would be attractive to those who claim to not know you, to those who claim that there is no God, and that they would see in nature, in us, that they would say and recognize their own conscience that there is a God. Thank you for giving us evidence of your goodness and of your grace. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a really good day today.